Aloha everybody. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to give this talk on how I manage my type 1 diabetes. My name is David Dykeman. In this seminar, I'm going to give a detailed account of my type 1 diabetes management strategy, which is mainly based off of Dr. Bernstein's very low carb protocol, um, which I've been following for about seven years in rigorous detail, and I give insight into the nuts and bolts of the strategy, for which I've consistently attained low blood sugars and A1Cs below 5, with very low variation. I will also share new data from others who follow the strategy, including information regarding insulin usage, diet, and more. So about one month post-diagnosis, we had the realization and epiphany that, that retaining normal blood sugars or what we thought was normal at the time with high carb food and riding this roller coaster was impossible. So we were looking for anything, uh, any guidance, and my mother actually found this Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution book. So reading that, we all thought it just, someone clicked and it just made sense what he was saying. So after that, we immediately switched and got off of the roller coaster to a low carb, high protein diet and immediately saw improvements. And comparing this graph, which is about a month following the diabetes solution to the graph we showed in the last slide, it's tremendous the improvement we made. Still not great, but so much different, a completely other world than the other one. So about six months after my diagnosis, we've been following Dr. Bernstein's guide for about five months, and we had truly gotten to the point where we would consider it normal blood sugars. Um, and then we were learning as we go, uh, including new insulin techniques, um, which all led to, to better blood sugars. And we even got to meet Dr. Bernstein, it was very cool for me, because um, I, I honestly think that he was one of the main reasons, or if not the main reason why I'm able to, to be here and be so healthy right now. Um, and then you can see this graph six months from, from where I was, it's pretty much normal blood sugars. Still not. So here's some of my motivations, goals, and some more results that I've had. So my main motivation is I just want to be normal. And I know that's, you know, sounds a lot of people, but not normal in the sense that I can eat a birthday cake with everybody else. Normal in the sense that I want to have the same blood sugars as everybody else and, and be able to do anything that anybody else can do. Uh, here's a picture of me and my high school football team um, in Cali. It's one of the guys, um, and yeah, remove the awful feelings of hyper and hypoglycemia. Second motivation is to prevent complications. So like I mentioned earlier, my doctor was very honest about complications, and he mentioned that they can start as early as the blood sugars rise from normal. Um, I know that Dr. Bernstein tests for about 100 different complications of elevated blood sugars. Um, so this is mainly the nuts and bolts section of how I personally manage it with such as insulin, you know, the meals I eat and the lifestyle I live. So in my diet, I have a strong emphasis on protein foods. Um, I eat a lot of also vegetables and nuts and other fibrous things. Um, one thing that's very cool is throughout this whole experience and, and connecting with other people who are following the Bernstein method, we've actually discovered a lot of great low carb treats that we can make like waffles, um, pancakes, all stuff that won't raise my blood sugar in the slightest way. So I enjoy eating. So this is a wrap up, um, 2020 and beyond, or 2021 we're in now, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna continue my advocacy for type one diabetics. Um, this is just a picture of me speaking at Low Carb USA in 2015. I've been doing this for a while. I enjoy doing it. Um, I'm passionate about it and I'm gonna continue. So my main message that I'm gonna leave you off on is that diabetics are entitled to normal healthy blood sugars. Um, which is a message that I've been living by since I found Dr. Bernstein's book and how I'm sure the thousands of people on Type 1 Grit are also living by. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And now I'm going to answer a couple questions. Um, I know you guys haven't answered questions because it's online. Um, just in case you guys were uh, unclear about some things, I just wanted to kind of simulate questions just in case. So question one, what do you do when your friends are eating high carb foods um, IG pizza. We already mentioned this earlier. Um, you can always almost at parties, you can find a way to eat something. If you're in that need for food, you know, there's always a burger, no bun anywhere. There's always hot dog, no bun. There's always a salad you can get anywhere. Uh, take off the cheese of the pizza. Um, so it's very easy. Y you'll be able to manage this once you get more experience on it. Um, but yeah, it's very easy. There's no um, really hardships or hacks you need to follow or anything. Question two, do I ever measure my ketones? Um, again, mentioned this earlier in the slides. No, I, I don't really um, worry about my ketones too much. Um, 
they've been around 0.2 the times that I have measured them, but I can't tell you the last time I measured them. It's not really a big um, interest of mine at this point in my life. Question three, do you ever have a bad hypoglycemia? Um, I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I had one. Again, the, the, the beauty of this low carb diet, almost the best part of it is that you remove the possibility of a roller coaster ride, which is, I keep saying roller coaster ride, meaning you know blood sugars from 200 down to 50 um, when you overcorrect and, and stuff like that. So with the low carb diet, um, it obviously can happen. You know, you can get um, human error, you can add too much insulin by accident and whatnot. It just doesn't happen that often for me, uh, very rarely at the most. Um, and, a, and a bad hyperglycemia for me is probably in the 50s or 60s, which again, I'll take lipid glucose for and be normal in, in 10, 15 minutes. So this is probably the most common one. Why not just eat like everybody else and shoot for an A1C of 7%? And like I said, two of my biggest motivations are one, to live a normal, healthy life and have blood sugars as my non-diabetic friends or my non-diabetic family members and two, to avoid complications. And with an A1C of 7%, like I showed you with an A1C of 6.5%, all the risk for complications are pretty much tremendously higher than if you were at an A1C, which I have right now at like 4.7%. Question five, what is your message to newly diagnosed families? Um, I guess my main one would be to order Dr. Bernstein's book, read through it. Um, this is something that you guys all have to go through together as a family. It makes it a lot easier for the child, especially if it's, you're dealing with a child with type one. Um, Support of the family is very important. Um, and again, read Dr. Bernstein's book. Thank you very much, everybody.